Vinny, this is funny. It's you and I on stage. You have a glass of Merlot. I'm <laughs> sitting with a Diet Coke. We have microphones, and we look like we're going to give a seminar to, like, Tony Robbins or something. <laughs> Do you people worry about foreclosure? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, but it, it was wicked. This is a great club. There's, like, let me say... You know, you work all around the country, and there's a lot of clubs, but this is like a great club because you, when you walk in here, it feels like a funny place. Am I right, people? It's like, you know, sometimes you go into a club, and it feels like too sterile, too clean, yeah. and it's annoying because you're like, oh, man, this is, uh, doesn't feel right. But this is, it just feels funny. It feels good, and the audience is great. And tell me the history behind this telephone because we are filming snippets of this, but it Obviously, you're on the podcast, you don't hear us, but there's a payphone on the stage. How did this come about? All right, Bob, first of all, I interview you. That's A. But <laughs> <laughs> when I first opened the club, yeah. uh, I had no money. So it's actually a pretty funny story. I, I bought all the contents of a kitchen from a restaurant that had been abandoned for like eight years. And on a, on a, at like a December night in 1993, I rent a U-Haul. And I take up this guy, Jose, that works for me, who was, who was black, but he was from Haiti. So he never would say he's black. He says, no, no, I'm Haitian. He would get very upset. <laughs> so here's what happened. In, in the restaurant, we bought all the shit from the restaurant. And on the wall of the restaurant was this pay phone. Right. So the owner of the restaurant is like, just give me, you know, whatever it was, $2,000, take whatever you want. And I saws all this off the wall. <laughs> and I throw it in the back office and... Because I had no money at the time. And I'm like, one day I'm going to break into it because there's money in this. Right. And I don't know how much there was, but at the time I was poor. And uh, Barry J., my friend, said, no, no, we're going to hook it up on stage. And we'll, we'll wire it into the sound system. And we'll do prank phone calls. Right. Which we did, yeah, which we did forever. Yeah. And now we're going to bring it back. And it was fun. But that's why it's there. I can't <laughs> not ignore it. Every time I come, I have to go to the phone because it's on stage. Did you, you heard my whole bit this weekend about the phone. Like every time I would do a joke, I'd pick it up and I'd go, oh, it's Stress Factory Corporate. Yeah. And Thursday night, there was a lady, I go, there's cameras all around the stage here. You were here Thursday. And I said, they, s they keep an eye on me, the comedian. It's like an NFL replay thing. <laughs> they go, uh, yeah, don't do that joke ever again. And I go, oh, I just lost Poughkeepsie. So I, I would lose gigs as the show went along, depending on how dirty the joke was. They didn't like it, they'd call me on the phone and <laughs> tell me. And some people, one lady was like, oh, my God, is that real? Is that a real thing? That's awesome. I have a very astute audience. Uh, yeah. 